From Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. And the matchup this afternoon, the number two team of the country, the Texas Longhorns, at 9-0, perfect in conference play, and the Kansas Jayhawks coming off a couple impressive wins in the past two weeks. Five and four set to go here in Austin. Kansas won the toss and deferred. Scott Webb will kick off its senior day in Austin. 31 players making their final appearance on this legendary field. The kick, a line drive. Ramont's Taylor has to let it go and will go into the end zone and touchback. Texas will work offensively from its own 20-yard line. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan with you as we'll take a look at one of the high-powered offenses in the country led by Vince Young. Texas, the number two scoring team in the country, number one in the Big 12, and they score early and they score often, as you can see. They scored on their first possession six of nine games this season, four of them touchdowns. So they'll work from the 20-yard line with three wide receivers, and Vince Young will set up in the shotgun to open things up. A quick throw, batted in the air, almost intercepted. Charlton Keith, one of the top sack specialists in the conference, gets a hand on the first pass of the ball game and almost picked it off. This is uh, the strength of the Kansas Jayhawks is their defense. If they've got a chance, the top right of your screen right there, if they've got a chance to win this game, the defense for Kansas has to set the tone. Vince Young's rebounding skills may have helped him there. That could have been a Kansas touchdown. Vince is 6'5", and Keith is a 6'5", also. It was a jumping match. On second down, Young set to go deep down the left sideline. Incomplete, no penalty marker. Theo Baines, the corner, staying with Lima Swede. That'll bring up third down and 10. We're talking with uh, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for the Longhorns yesterday, he says they have a pretty pretty good scheme against the run on first down, and they get pretty testy on third down. Uh, so he said, we're going to throw some balls early to try to, to get them off of our uh, run game. That's right. And they've thrown the first two times out of the box. You assume they're going to have to a third time here. And it looks like the extra Kansas rushers may be coming. They back out of it on third and 10. Young in trouble in the pocket, scrambles out of it. But he only gets across the line of scrimmage and puts up maybe a yard or two. And so on the first possession, Kansas defense does its job. A big plus for Kansas and the Jayhawks. They wanted their defense on the field first. They stopped them three and out. Now they turn it over to their offense. So Richmond McGee will come in to punt. Richmond basically took the week off last week. He didn't have to punt in the route of Baylor. So he'll get his first one here in the opening minute. And that's Charles Gordon. And he's... A great player, both offensively and defensively, used almost exclusively in the past couple of weeks on the offensive side of the ball. Try to kick it away from him, but he's going to have a chance to field it at the 43-yard line. Got by the first wave. Into Longhorn territory, then got buried by Killebrew on the special teams. Ten-yard return of only a 36-yard punt. And you talk about things going the way Kansas wanted them to go, three and out, and then start offensively in Texas territory. That's for sure. But this is, Kansas is not good on the road. They're 0-4 this year on the road. They're undefeated 5-0 at home. The offense comes out under Jason Swanson's leadership. And since he's regained the starting quarterback job after some early season injuries, this club has started to click better offensively for Coach Mangino as well. Exactly. Swanson is the last two games he started. They won both games. Kansas. Tim Crowder pushes the tackle down. And we'll see whether or not it was drawn offside or not. Both start. 65 offense. Five yards. First down. That is the call. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Bob and Brad, I talked to Matt Brown before the game began. I remind him of a quote that Jesse Jackson has. says, keep hope alive. Well, that's the last thing you want to do if you're the number two ranked team in college football. You want to take it away from the other team. He says, what we're going to try and do is come out and get a quick start. But this is senior day. With all the introductions, we traditionally get a little slow, but we're going to take more risks at the start of the ball game. Brad? Let's see if they do defensively. On the ground, not too close to midfield. 
is Clark Green. Rashad Bobino makes the stop defensively. This Kansas offense is, 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 is really not that good. They've played well the last two weeks. They're 101st in the nation in total offense. They're not much better than the other ones, 93rd passing, but the last couple of weeks, they've done better. Texas defensively is very stout. This should be a, a, a tough matchup for Kansas offense. And again, Crowder comes flying in there and flags will fly as well on a second down at 12. And you're seeing one thing that you can't do. If you're struggling offensively, you can't stop yourself and make it more difficult. Full start, 50, offense. Five yards, second down. Ryan Cantrell, the right guard. So when they started in Texas territory, now they've backed up inside their own 45. There's Cantrell second with a little movement. He's a, he's a red shirt freshman, making only his uh, third start. And they know these, these Kansas players, these players on the field know what their ratings are. They know how good that Texas defense is. Four wideouts for Swanson. Out of the gun, throws, it's tipped at the line. I think it might have been Robinson who got a hand on it. That'll bring up third down and long. Robinson, one of those rush ends, and he's a good one. Been playing with a strained Achilles tendon. Didn't play, in fact, at all last week. Back in the lineup today. And if you're one of these Kansas Jayhawks, it is third and you just don't want to turn it over. You don't want to lose it on offense. Just, just try and stay on the field. Keep your defense off the field for a while and try to win it with your defense and some special teams plays like they did last week. Ninth in the Big 12 and then third down conversions. This is a long one. Third and 17. Swanson drops back, runs right into trouble, almost lost the ball, and he's buried back inside the 40. So the Kansas offense started at the Texas 48-yard line. They're going to end up hunting from about their own 38-yard line. Yeah, well, you've just seen the strength of Mark Mangino's team. The defense was solid, and the weakness, the offense, was not. So punting time for Kyle Tucker. Tucker's had one block this year. There's his numbers, 43 a kick. Aaron Ross back for Texas. The Longhorns have blocked four punts this year. They've blocked six kicks, but four of them have been punts. Killebrew, number 40, has blocked kicks two of the last three weeks. They give him free reign. He kicks away, and Harris will call for a fair catch, try to clear everybody out of the way. Boy, that thing went a mile in the air. Aaron had to run up on it at the 28-yard line. Only a 33-yard kick, but it went about 70 yards in the air. So Texas gets it right back. Vince Young chopping at the bit. Want to get back out there after the three and out to open things up for Texas. So Vince Young has final words on the sideline, and here he comes again. Six plays so far and no first downs for Texas offense. The field position gets a little bit better with each subsequent punt, though, for Texas. Now they work at the 35-yard line. Taylor with a single setback, and Vince will be under center. And the option, Taylor on the corner, across the 40, puts his head down and bounces out of bounds right about at the first down marker. This kid's had an interesting year. Spent most of the time at wide receiver in the spring and in the summer. Bounce back and forth. Now the starter last week at tailback and went over 100 yards and scored three touchdowns in the win over Baylor. So he's not only a good running back, but obviously being used as a wide receiver so often, he's dangerous in that department as well. Dave Thomas, uh, the tight end, had a great block to help spring him on that Whoops. play. Picks it up on one hop. Got the corner. Might have a bunch more. Talk about fortuitous hops. That thing could have been a disaster, and it came right back up to him. You're exactly right, partner. Into Kansas territory with a run. There's a first down. Finally, we'll move the sticks. Let's take a look and see if we can see. It looked like uh, Vince had the ball right in there. He looked like Taylor was looking and didn't put his hands down to, to clamp on the football but you're right you had a great break the ball just popped right back to him 
So first down at the Jayhawk 45. First trip for Texas into Kansas territory. Nice play fake by Vince Young. Might want it all. Going deep. Got Sweet out there. Got it. Touchdown. The slow start is over. 45 yards, Vince Young to Lima Sweet, touchdown Texas. Well, it was kind of a jump ball, but he's got a guy almost built like Roy Williams out there wearing Roy's old number at 6'5", and he just went up and got it. David Pino, another of the seniors in for the point after. And it's up and good. Take another look at the touchdown. And uh, single coverage at the top, inside technique by Baines on the outside. And you're exactly right, partner. He just throws it up. Baines sees it, just can't get up there. Tweed, Tweed is 6'5", and Baines is 5'11". So Tweed out jumps him. Kind of pushes, gets some separation from him, too, a little bit. Little hand fight there. Little hand fighting going on, but he's 6'5", and he can jump. But, Bob, when we were talking to Young at the meeting yesterday, he was talking about the players around him, the confidence he has in them, and they talk about the confidence they have in Young. It's great when the quarterback knows he can put the ball out there and rely on his receivers to make a play for it. And if he doesn't make the big catch or the big play, they at least knock it down. These are things you can't coach. These are things you can't teach anyone. But these are the things that come with confidence and trust in your teammates over a period of time. I don't know that I've been around a team, maybe with the exception of USC, that does have as much confidence in each other. And you can tell it off the field, on the practice field, and you just saw it, as Wally said, right there with a the touchdown. Greg Johnson a kick. Higgins and Green back deep. Higgins will take it at the three. Lost the ball twice. Texas got it. They might score. They will. Killing rule. Touchdown. They're going to bring it back, I think, to the 10 yard line. And that draws around the booze. But just the thing that Mangino did not want to happen has happened. That is special teams. He wanted to win the battle on special teams. And now they they turn it over. And there's the guy. Boom, got a hit. Picked it up. And not advanceable, so it comes back to the 10-yard line. A, a muff, a muff is not advanceable. A fumble. Is. And they ruled that him up. And probably a good call. First and goal at the 10. The run inside is to the end zone anyway. Jamal Charles touchdown. So it only took one play to take advantage of the fumble recovery. In a matter of about Fifteen seconds, it's gone from scoreless to 14 to nothing if the extra point's good. In a matter of three plays, the long pass to Sweet, the kickoff, and then the run for the touchdown, Kansas is out of this game. This is exactly what they wanted to do to Texas and not to themselves. Extra point, up and good. 7.40 remaining in the first quarter. And number two, Texas looking like the number two team in the country. 14 to nothing. Slow start with two three and outs. And then they've lit up the scoreboard. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and Austin. Texas, two series, three and out at the beginning, and then boom, Vince Young. Kansas was doing well on, a, on the road where they don't play well until the kickoff, the fumble, the big play, the big play. 
two plays within with uh, three plays within a matter of 15 20 right. seconds and now they're down this isn't the kind of kansas offense that's going to rebound right away no, either they, you they, would think. they don't come back that well they, they're going to need some turnovers of their own Fifteen total yards away from being the school career leader. He's still got a whole other season to play here in Austin. Here's Ramon's Taylor. A lot of dancing and all it got him was about a five yard loss. Vince, his numbers on the season, 63%, much more accurate than the past couple of years. Eight touchdowns on the ground. 26 and 2 as a starter. That's the important part. He doesn't really care about stats, he'll tell you that. Doesn't mind piling a few up, but that's not the important part. And the chemistry of this team, Greg Davis was telling us yesterday in his 33 years of coaching, he's never seen more chemistry on one football team. Offensively, defensively, special teams, the whole package. The throw is to Thomas, the senior. He's got a big gainer, the tight end out to the 45. David, a senior out of Wolfarth, Texas, playing his final game here at home. Let's take a look at the press door starting lineups. Here's the big eaters up front. Scott and Stuttered and Sendline, all their daddies played, and they're heck of a players, too. Allen and Blaylock round out the front five. Taylor starting at tailback. We'll see three today, though. Ahmad Hall, the fullback Thomas. We just saw him with a big catch in Pittman and Sweet of the Two starting wide receivers, and they go to three and four wide receiver packages much of the time as they do here. Young, plenty of time trying to thinking about sidearming it over the middle. Instead, he takes off, flags down. If that run was to stand, he'd be the total offense career leader, but I think it's coming back on a holding call. I think they're going to take it away from him, but I think he'll eventually get it back. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> holding 73 offense 10 yards previous spot first down Jonathan Scott the guilty party Ashley and Keith some really good defensive ends that can bring some pressure for Kansas Allen and McClinton are the inside guys the linebackers Bob talked about them earlier Reed and Kane and Floodman they've all been around a long time they're all defensive captains the secondary Baines and Tlaib on the corner and Kemp and Fowler are the safeties this Kansas team, this is the best scoring defense in 24 years at Kansas. And this group is uh, really impressive. They really get off the ball, get in the backfield, and make things happen. Dalton Keith, you're seeing there, 18 tackles for loss, fourth in the conference with eight sacks, and he almost had an interception earlier in the ball game on a batted ball. Young's going to go deep. Cosby's out there, flags are down. It's going to be interference, but he's got the ball, and a touchdown, Texas. 64 yards. These passes are not things of beauty from Vince Young, but his receivers are making him look awful good right now. That's just what I was going to say. I mean, it's just, they're just they're throwing him up for grabs. It's not necessarily that, but he's doing the right thing because like Swanee said earlier, at worst, his, his receivers are going to fight to knock the ball down, not let it get picked off. But they're doing one better by catching it and running it into the end zone. That was some kind of grab by the former center fielder. That's what he looked like he was doing there because he wrestled that ball away in what would have been the pass interference call, and instead it's a 64-yard touchdown. He don't win for the point after. All Texas right now. Still 4.37 to go in the first quarter. Greg Johnson's been a busy kicker. High and short this time. Green's going to run up on it up the 10-yard line. Oh, didn't get to the 20. Ran into a buzzsaw named Matt Melton on the special teams. You know, some coaches just drool over the way Texas looks sometimes. <laughs> Bevo 14 does the same. His team is in front 21 to nothing. Swanson on the handoff to Cornish. And Cornish maybe got a yard. That's about it. Larry Dibbles again helped out on the stop defensively along with Robison. Kansas, uh, this is their fourth possession. 
They've had nine plays. They've run nine plays for nine yards. Each of the first three possessions were three plays and a punt. And Texas has 21 points on the board despite only having two plays run in Kansas territory. They did it from long range and then on the muffed kick, they did it in one play from the 10. Find the tight end to be in motion. Play clock. I guess they got it off. It was close. Quick throw. Ball is loose. And I think they're going to spot it back out at the 25 yard line. Swanee. So, Brad, you know, during pregame warm up, I was watching Kansas and you know, watching the offense work and standing behind Swanson. And Mark Mangino came over and he's talking to his offense as they were executing. He said, Hey, guys, just remember. We want to be patient. We want to take our time. We don't want to be in a hurry. We want to get short passes. We want to take the short runs, try and possess this football as much as possible because the overall game plan has to be keeping it out of the hands of the offense of Texas so Vince Young and company can't put up a lot of points. And already with two touchdown passes, Vince has put up big points. Watson, throw. Would have been a tough catch for Fine. He had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. And Kansas will have to give it up again. Yeah, it was open. If Swanson could have gotten the ball out in front of him, Fine had a step. The uh, Texas defense was in a blitz situation, so they had a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations in the secondary. Most of Swanson's passes have been behind his intended receivers so far. Kyle Tucker has come in to punt again. Aaron Ross back deep already three punts in the first quarter. You don't want your punter to be that busy. Last time Ross fair caught the ball when as soon as he did he knew he had plenty of room in front of him. Nice kick flags are down at the line of scrimmage. Ross is fielded at the 16 got by the first wave again and goes out of bounds after about a 15 yard return but again penalty markers back at the line of scrimmage. Call on Kansas. And I would think Texas is going to make him kick again because that was a heck of a punt. David Thomas out there and Mac Brown is giving the sign saying take the penalty. Thank you. Holding number 45, offense, 10 yards, previous spot, fourth down. So that's going to back it up inside the 20s where they'll be punting from the next time. Mac Brown in his eighth year in Texas and looking for his 80th victory as the head man of the Longhorns. 42 and three on this field in his eight years here. That's not too bad. It's his 22nd year as a head coach in college. He spent 10 years at North Carolina and then the three years at Tulane. He's on a lot of coach of the year semifinalist lists. A perfect season is a possibility. Now Tucker's near his own goal line. Let's see if Texas comes after it. The snap's a little high, but they've got the return on, and he got another dandy of a punt. Way back goes Ross to the 29. And across the 40, Ross in the clear. Look out. The punter to beat. Ross at the 20. He is gone. Touchdown. You make him kick it again. 71 yard punt return for a score. The wheels are falling off the Jayhawk wagon right now, and there's still two and a half to go in the quarter. Well, that's two special team touchdowns in the first quarter for Texas. Happy coach and a happy return guy. Pino in for the point after. A junior out of Tyler, Texas. 
There's been some pretty good football players come out of Tyler, Texas. This is and his second punt return for a touchdown this year. A lot of weaving, and then got the clear and turned on the speed. 28 to nothing, Texas. Career total offense, the leader now, having overtaken Major Applewhite is Vince Young. 8,153 yards. You know, you know the scary thing about all that is? He's got a year and something he's, to go. He's got another year to go. And he has uh, said repeatedly that uh, he is going to come back for his fifth year. He's been asked so many times that he's handled all those questions perfectly, including the ones about the Heisman Trophy and everything else. Here he is off play action. Plenty of time, patiently pulls it down now, puts a move on, and gets out of bounds after he got about five yards. Nick Reed ran him out of bounds, you know, the I, linebacker. And I think the atmosphere around this place is such that that the guys don't want to leave early. They're, I don't think Mac has had had anybody that has left early that still had eligibility to go at the University of Texas. It really is a family atmosphere that uh, Mac has created. Mac and Sally, his wife, big part of it, and a huge part of the community. Here's Charles in the open field, Jamal Charles. He's all the way down inside the Kansas. 40 to the 37, 20-yard run. Remember, he had a touchdown run of 10 yards earlier in the ball game. One of the, one of the things that has been talked about around here is maybe Texas won't have a 1,000-yard rusher this year for the first time in the last what 10 years. Yeah. Charles came in with about 700 yards, and actually Vince Young, the quarterback, had 778 78 yards. So Vince could get it before Charles does. It's had a thousand yard season two years ago on the ground. That was that that was back when he didn't know what he was doing throwing the ball. Actually, two years ago he's a little bit short. Last year is when he had 1,079 and 14 rushing touchdowns. So he's a dual that was, threat. That was when he had to take it down and run because he didn't read the coverages right. Yep. Now I think he's a better quarterback reading coverages, knowing what to do with the ball, and he's not making, not having to run as much. Of course, he just took over the Rose Bowl and the win over Michigan. Running and throwing. And the MVP, and we, we talked to him yesterday. All of the Texas players, for the most part, have said, we've been aiming toward Houston. They want to be in the Big 12 championship game because since the BCS has come into play, they've never won the Big 12 title in that big game that'll match north and south. But yesterday, admittedly, with all his teammates around him, Vince Young looked at us and kind of winked and he said, I don't see any flowers in here, but I'm, I'm almost getting a whiff of roses. <laughs> so they're getting, they know what's down the road if they just keep doing their well, business. This summer when they were all working out, they, they, were, they were talking Big 12. We'll win the Big 12, we'll win the Big 12. And then, and then after that, everything takes care of itself. And that's what they're looking at, some burnt orange roses in Pasadena, maybe against USC. That's the dream matchup that everybody has been talking about really since the beginning of the season. And so far, neither team has disappointed. Cal and USC playing right now. We'll keep you abreast of those scores, or John will. Here's a little counter. And again, it didn't look like there was any room for Jamal Charles, but that, that whole wave just kept moving, and he finally found a little crease and got eight more yards. Nice job of just walling off the Kansas defenders, not getting any penetration, and he gets a good gain out of it. Near the conclusion of our game today, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Texas with a 28-point lead and a first down at the 23-yard line of Kansas. And Vince Young has hit his last seven passes to what, five different receivers? See if he can make it eight in a row to the end zone. In and out of the hands of Swede's hands, but there's going to be pass interference, it appears, on Aqib Talib. It was a pretty well thrown ball. Well designed pass, too, uh, Brad. They had two post routes, one going across and the uh, flanker going deep into the middle. Pass interference, number 28 defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Take a look up here, the top receiver just going to go down and run a post. The, the shorter receiver's running across the field. And he 
He basically gets him all over the legs to take away that little extra jumper. He maybe would have caught that for the now touchdown. He just hit him just a tad early. So now on the ninth play of the Texas drive, they're inside the Kansas 10-yard line. First and goal. With the sun coming out in Austin. Ramos Taylor might make it shine even brighter. Touchdown! Looking pretty easy for the Longhorns right now. Taylor and Pittman, two tight teammates. They call each other cousins, even though they're not related, but they're best friends. They got a little bump over there on the sideline in celebration of another touchdown. Eight yard touchdown run. Kino point after up a good. Texas 35, Kansas nothing. We still got 12 minutes plus remaining in the second quarter. Happy Longhorn fans here in Austin today. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nestler. That's Ramon's Taylor. Staying warm after his touchdown run. Greg Johnson's kick. Fielded four yards deep by Thompson, and Kansas will have to work from the 20-yard line. That is the, that is the, uh, what is that? That's the seventh possession. And the sixth time they've gone three plays and out. The other time was the kickoff where they fumbled it, fumbled it over to uh, Texas. And so Tucker again will have to punt from his own goal line, and Ross has already taken one for a touchdown today, long distance. They haven't come close to blocking a punt yet, but they really have had the return on most of the day. Not a good kick this time off the side of his foot. And takes a Texas bounce right away. And it's going to be Texas starting in Kansas territory again at the 47-yard line. Only a 32-yard kick. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. What former Jayhawk or Longhorn is credited with inventing the football helmet? It wasn't that guy, I don't think. Although he might be credited with putting horns on a leather yeah, helmet. Yeah, I like the horn. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Well, I could have used that on my helmet. <laughs> on a few of those quarterback sneaks. He's got everything going on. <laughs> I want to party with that guy. <laughs> we'll give you the answer a little bit later on. They look like they look like Vikings. <laughs> At the 47-yard line, Salvin Young in with Vince Young in the backfield. Low snap. Vince has to go down and snatch it up and buys himself some time, and tiptoes out of bounds. Even right there, you saw he's always just patient. He never gets he never gets rattled. He never gets nervous or jumpy. You know, the the unexpected doesn't doesn't bother him. He says, oh, I'm gonna reach in and pick this up, and I'm still gonna try and make something out of this. Snap was low. Hit him it, right in the ankle. It's a shin. He steps up there <laughs> like a hot potato and picks it up. So second down, he got a yard out of it. Two yards, actually. Second down and eight. Hand off. Try to get to the corners, Charles. Excuse me, it's Selvin Young. It's Selvin Young, a great run, 17 yards. Young has been a little bit banged up, but they still put him in there on all third down situations because he's so great at blitz pickup, and he's got good hands out in the backfield. He shows his running ability right here. And you talk about the depth of, of, of Texas in some of these positions. We've talked about the offensive defensive line. Selvin Young is, is, is the third guy in there today because like, you said he's injured. Jamal Charles, the outstanding true freshman, and Roman Taylor, the other two guys that have been in there, they're, they're explosive, exciting backs. Now you've got Selvin Young, another guy. They've got more depth than most teams have good players. 
Young going deep, Scott Thomas down the seam, touchdown! David Thomas, a tight end. 29 yards, another Longhorn score. That's Vince Young's third touchdown pass of the day. Ten nineteen remaining in the half, and soon to be forty-two to nothing, Texas. David Pino in for the point after. And it's up and good. Get out of the way. It's good. They're using a lot of ammo over there today. 10-19 remaining in the half. A red-hot Vince Young. And his supporting cast ain't bad either. So Kansas has not gotten anything going offensively. And again, they find themselves 80 yards from the Texas end zone. Let me ask you a question. I think Vince is happy. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, he's not going to get the play much. Right? That, that's probably true. He wants to play. At the line of scrimmage, Clark Green is going to be swarmed under by a host of Longhorns, led by O'Cam and Bobino. We asked you an Aflac trivia question earlier. What former Jayhawk or Longhorn is credited with inventing the football helmet? Who wants to take a shot at this? Swanee? I'm going last because I know the answer. Oh, you do know the answer? I do know the answer. I'm going to guess... Uh, John Outland from Kansas, the it's Outland in, Trophy it's guy. It's in the book. Is it? I actually saw it. Oh, good. Tell me. Naismith. There you go. The man, the man credited with inventing basketball took a football, cut it in half, and strapped it over his head. You guys are awesome. <laughs> you didn't look at your media guy this week. I had other things on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> not, not enough games left, I don't think. Unless we really put out a storm at the end, uh, Mr. Greasy's going to be. Look out. Intercepted. Aaron Ross might have a second touchdown. Stretches out. Didn't quite get there. Number 31 took it 31 yards. Saw down that to the one yard line. Saw that coming all the way. Doesn't look like the receiver and the quarterback are on the same page. It looks like the quarterback was expecting a slam for the receiver to be inside, and the only guy that was inside was Ross. They officially spot Aaron down at the three yard line, just inside the three. Big day for that guy, huh? Wow. Punt return for a touchdown, an interception where he almost scored. And he's, and he's not even a starter. That's right. Well, Max says he is. I mean, they say they say they've got six, seven guys that are considered starters in that secondary. They got the big freshman in their tailback right now, Melton. They fake it to him. Young. Touchdown. Peter Allman is back up tight end. Four touchdown passes for Vince Young. If you didn't have him in your Heisman finalists, I'm not sure why, but he might be going up that list a little bit. The ballots come out this week, by the way. That'll be a good, uh, that'll be an interesting one this year. And, and it will be made even more interesting because of the two other top candidates on the same team taking votes away from each other. Exactly. Four touchdown passes to four different receivers for Vince Young. It's 49 to nothing. Somebody needs to go to the store for more ammunition. Vince Young buying time with his legs and lobbing it to his tight end for the touchdown. Vince Young still at the controls here with a couple minutes left in the half. Swede makes a catch. And stripped out of there, but it's still going to be about a nine-yard game. Here's a give to Taylor. He's got a first down across the 40 to the 42. Still on his feet. Whoop, that's getting a little chippy down there. Frustration, obviously, on the side of Kansas. And the offensive line of Texas has really done some kind of job. There's big Jonathan Scott. 
Casey Stuttered and Justin Blaylock, Will Allen, Lyle Sendline. Stuttered's the guy at number 64 right there, the left guard. They say he's the only guy that ever talks in a huddle except Vince, and he never shuts up. Here's a throw, completes across midfield again, close to another first down. Yeah, I asked Vince yesterday, I said, Vince, I said, you know, now your quarterbacks control the huddle. When you walk in the huddle, is there anybody that is talking? I mean, I was thinking about the receivers and maybe <laughs> some of the offensive linemen, but they all laughed. Oh, they, all laughed. they all said stuttered. Stuttered's the throwback, they say. He's like a football player from yesteryear. Here's Ramon Taylor again on a counter going the other way this time. And Got another first down. Stuttered, of course, if the name rings a bell. Casey's daddy was a heck of a player, too, and played the National Football League for a long time. And they're very, they look very similar. His dad was taller and, and more slender, probably, than Casey. But facially, they look quite a bit alike. And uh, those guys will get after it. You look at three guys on that offensive line, their dads all played football. Jonathan Scott's yeah. dad, Ray, played and was uh, drafted into the NFL. We mentioned Dave Stutter, Casey's dad. And Lyle Sendline, Robin Sendline mm -hmm. was a heck of a linebacker, played. played with the Vikings and the Dolphins. That's right. So they got some they got some uh, good genes up there on that offensive front for the Longhorns. And then they got a guy behind them that's pretty cool and calm too. First and ten, fumble 36. First down for Texas. Just inside the Kansas 37. Vince Young might want more. Deep middle, got his man inside the 15. It's Billy Pittman. And a pickup of 24 more yards. So Texas might get another touchdown here before halftime. Now they're just, nobody's getting close to uh, Young. As you see right there, he just got all kinds of time. And his receivers getting open downfield. We were told that they were probably going to hit the slot guy, Pittman, or the tight end. The two inside guys seem to be open against this defense. Young keeps it. I didn't think we'd see him handle the ball running much today. Hasn't had to. And now he gets swarmed under by Banks, Floodman, and company. And a little pushing and shoving, getting up. Trying to get their quarterback. And there's Stuttered, the guy we were just talking about. He's in the mix. Who called timeout? Texas did. Texas did. It's getting to the point of boredom for the Longhorn fans, 49 just, to nothing. I'm just thinking if there's some revenge type of thing to get uh, to what Mark Mangino said last year after that ball game, if these guys, I mean, they don't need to call timeout. And one of the guys when it was reminded to the Texas team about Coach Mangino's comments that we showed you earlier, one of the guys that took exception was Mitch Young. Yeah. And he went around and said, you know, you can, you can, uh, you can diss the players, but don't diss the Texas coaches. They're our guys. And so he made it pretty apparent all week long that that memory was stuck in his mind. And he's still in there with a 49-point lead with a minute and 23 remaining in the half. Well, I doubt if you'll see him in the second half. I, I wouldn't think so. That wasn't a misprint. One first down for Kansas versus 16, I believe it was. For the Longhorns. Three for three in the red zone already. Young to throw. Dropped the ball. And got back. And got back on top of it. This time with a little more urgency. So that backs him all the way up to the 27 yard line. Loss of about 12. Brandon Perkins was the guy that caused the fumble. He's uh, one of the top sack guys. There he comes, undersized, coming around the corner. Yeah, he's got nine sacks uh, already this season. They don't, they don't list him on their two deep. He's a smaller guy, but he was rushing against the uh, tight end. And now Jayhawk player down. I think it's uh, Jerome Kemp who's shaking up on the play. Working on his lower left leg. They're going to reset the clock to 115 as we look at Jerome Kemp and uh, working on his lower left leg. And Vince Young already with a career high four touchdown passes. You would assume it's going to be in the air here. And they may not be able to get uh, a first down, but they can get it down closer for their field goal kicker because they you, would have to get inside the three right now yeah, for but, first down. But you got so many game breakers, playmakers, get them the ball on a slant and let these guys run. 
they can uh, make a few moves and uh, jerks and uh, they're in the end zone. They're going to bring the blitz. There's the quick toss to the tight end. He's run out of bounds. David Thomas goes out at about the 18 yard line and that will make it a little closer for the kicker. That'll bring out David Pino, one of the seniors on the season. He's 9 of 11. He hasn't had to kick many field goals when you got an offense this good. He's warming it up right <laughs> Look now. Look how little the kicker is compared to them. <laughs> <laughs> Look how little. Uh, <laughs> David, one of the guys introduced to senior as Mac Brown gave him all a big hug coming out of the tunnel. This will be a 35 yard field goal attempt to try to put 50 plus on the board again in a half for Texas. Dino from 35, the kick on the way, and it's up, and it's good. Okay, Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in front of a happy group of Longhorns as they lead it 52 to nothing in the first half over Kansas. What'd you say? 52? 52 to nothing. Kind of hoping wouldn't have to get that word out today, at least to nothing. <laughs> Greg Johnson to kick. Thompson and Green wait on the other end. It doesn't help on a kick return when you get that cannon shot right in your ear when you're trying to field it at the three yard line, I wouldn't imagine. You got your back down there. Yeah. You jumped four feet in the air before the ball got there. Thompson got out to about the 21 yard line. Our Dr. Pepper Big 12 updates. Oklahoma survived Texas a and They had a strong start and uh, then a game that took about four hours and ten minutes if you joined us after that one. Yeah, Oklahoma's, uh, I think they've won like four in a row now. Yeah, Texas Tech falls to Oklahoma State. Nebraska is leading Kansas State. Missouri on top of Baylor and Colorado and Iowa State tonight is the big one for the Big 12 North. And uh, could be the elimination or if Colorado wins that, they're going to be going to Houston to play a Texas team that already thumped them once. Yeah. But that was here. That was here. And um, they're running out of Winchester shells, I'm telling you. Shotgun like that, and you do some serious duck hunting. Four shells at once. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get around the front of that thing. I wouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> That's Marty down there, probably our camera guy, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, good job, Marty. Duck, dude. <laughs> So we're down final uh, 25 seconds of the half. We'll bring three wide receivers out to the near side and Swanson will be under center. And they're going to uh, keep it on the ground, get to the locker room, and uh, I don't know if there's such a thing as regrouping in a situation like this, but the first half mercifully will come to a close. And the Texas Longhorn fans giving their team a standing ovation as they head out to the tunnel. 31 seniors making their final appearance, and boy, have they appeared here at home today. All the girls in Texas are cute. Even if you're chewing on your fingers and your team's up 52 to nothing. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. I, I don't think you probably have ever been in this spot, have you? 52 to nothing down. Uh, and yeah. what do you do? Uh, yeah. I've been on both sides yep. way back in the day. I was down, <laughs> but I haven't been down too much. Uh, if you're up, you just it, you, you take it's good and you say, all right, just nobody get hurt. Let's go out and let the young guys get some playing time. If you're on the downside, you just you say, let's go out and, and, and at least win the second half, make some things happen, get ready for next week because Kansas can we get a bowl game if they win next week. Well, they're going to have to have a unbelievable second half even to get in this game. Vince Young has been sensational. We expected him to be, and he's been everything uh, advertised and then some career high, four touchdown passes already. And uh, amazingly, Texas was three and out on their first two possessions. And uh, Bob said at that time, you know, that's okay. Vince is usually a slow starter. But yep. oh boy, when he hooked up with Lima Sweet on the first touchdown of the ball game, a 45 yard strike, it, it all just came to fruition for Texas at that time, and it came unraveled for Kansas because on the ensuing kickoff, they muffed it. Texas took it in one play later, so in a span of uh, 15, 20 seconds, it went from a 0-0 ball game to 14 to nothing Longhorns, and now they have not looked back. Yeah, well, how, how good is this Texas team, okay? Offensively, they're going against a very good 
Kansas defense. Right. So I'm very impressed with this offense. Now defensively for, uh, for Texas, this, this Kansas offense is not much, and I don't think they've really been tested. But I've been impressed with the special teams of Texas exactly. because they've covered well and they've run well and they've uh, got some turnovers. And Free kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. And they'll spot it on the 35 and we'll spot Swanee. Well, thank you, Brad. I talked to Mark Mangino when he came out in the field, and his, his response was what I suspected. It's about personal pride, he said. This is a good football team. He faces it. His team understands it, but the players don't want to play next to a guy who gives up in the ball game. So what he wants his team to do is come out and play hard in the second half, keep their heads in the ball game and stay focused and get better and not give up because they have to carry the results of this game with them for the rest of the season. Yep, no doubt. And they start off well. They got it at the 35 through a six yard pass complete. And they will start at about the 41 yard line. Swally, did you talk to Mac about whether or not uh, Vince Young's going to play in the second half? I did. He said that they've always had a game plan where Vince stays into the ball game through the third quarter and the ones on defense play. But the question is, he doesn't want to get him hurt. He's going to come out, think about it, probably let Vince start the first series of the ball game to see how that goes. Then he's going after that, Brad. Here's the start for Kansas that they were looking for. They got a touchdown. Yeah, that might change the. Uh, Max thinking a little bit. John Cornish just took it about 60 yards for a score. And Kansas on the board. Well, this is what Kansas needed at the beginning of the ball game. This is what they did last week against Nebraska with a long touchdown run. That hardly impacts the outcome of this ball game, however. So Cornish with a long touchdown run, and he outran a very speedy secondary, so he showed his wheels. Longest play from scrimmage allowed by Texas all year long right there. And the extra points is up and good. But John Cornish, we told you that he'd play. He and Clark Green at share time. Here he is on that option. And he got the corner and he was gone. And yeah, and the question is, that is the first team defense out there for Texas. And what a heck of a what a heck of a motivator and a heck of a speech by Mark Mangino. <laughs> To get them to come out here and play as well as they did the first drive. Did something right, that's for sure. I want to add one more thing that Matt Brown said when he left the field at halftime. He said, you know, they're, they're going to get their number twos and threes into this ball game. They're going to play. But, you know, he's up against between the rock and the hard place. He doesn't want his guys to quit. He wants guys to continue to play hard. But he doesn't want to be in a position where he's running up the score. But you can't stop your number twos and threes from going out there and playing hard football and putting up more points. That's exactly right. They don't get the opportunity all that often. Our Pacific Life uh, game summary, first half, statistically, as you might expect, uh, pretty lopsided in the favor of the Longhorns. 383 total yards, so maybe on their way to another 600-yard total offense type day. Those penalties were costly for Kansas early, and uh, they had... The turnover that cost him on the kick return. Only one first down for uh, Kansas. Eight three and outs. No, not, uh, not pretty. Here's a give to Taylor. And Ramos gets it out to the 22, almost a 23 yard line. Muhammad made the stop from the secondary. College Station, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Reliance Stadium in Houston. And then there's that Rose Bowl out there. <laughs> Well, they got everything ready. They had the process of elimination. I assume they're going to take those signs and check them off every place they go. Well, you know, it's great for the fans. It, 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 the anticipation, and it, it, which is part of the best part of anything, is the anticipation of going on a trip, going on a cruise, going to the uh, Rose Bowl, going to the championship game. But that's good for the fans, but not for the players and coaches. Full start. 16 offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. David Thomas saying, my fault, guys. Penalty on the tight ends. Offensive leaders for Texas in the first half. David was among them with three catches for 70 yards, including a touchdown. Ramont's a touchdown run with 56 yards. And Vince Young, a career high in one half, four touchdowns. Taylor on the ground again. Kansas bottling him up, trying to bring him down anyway. They never do quite get him down. Pass 
is caught by Billy Pittman on the ricochet. And Billy's got a first down. Hey, how tough is that? I mean, how tough is playing your own son? I mean, and 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 his brother is on your side as we take a look at the, from behind the Kansas defense. He's going to he's looked into our right and then he comes back almost gets sacked, and then wants to throw it and then the ball is tipped and he still catches. He got away from Perkins who forced him to fumble in the first half once. Stretch play here Taylor following his blockers but brought down from behind by Nick Reed. Nice tackle by the captain outside linebacker out of Derby Kansas 6'4 230 pounder the number two tackler in the conference. This is his 40th straight start. For Nick and Nick was talking this week said boy the, I know the play that I remember the most from last year when we played Texas it was fourth down and 18 Vince Young took off on a run Nick said I thought I had a beat on him <laughs> he put a move on me and I didn't get the tackle he picked up 22 yards in a first down and subsequently they went on and won and he said is the only time Vince Young said anything to him during the game he says you got to keep your head up I just did a Texas two-step on it <laughs> <Chris Taylor. laughs> <laughs> Ramats goes out to the 48 yard line pick up a 13 and more. Nick remembered that huh? yeah, Nick remembers that <laughs> but uh, that was the play that really saved the game for Texas last year because they were in danger of losing and here was the pump fake you're going to see number seven come into the screen whoa not enough <laughs> and the extra few yards gave him the first down and kept the drive alive the old Texas, Texas two step, step. Yep. Yeah. only thing you ever said to me First down. And Charles breaks open and almost got out of there. Charles Bounced okay. off Nick Reed again. Eventually did go down, and Nick's got to re-snap the chin gear there. Charles, a true freshman out of Port Arthur, Texas, and Bob said he was highly touted. In fact, uh, Port Arthur uh, broke the Port Arthur City career rushing record. You know who that belonged to? No. Little Joe Washington. Oh, yes. Joe. Oklahoma and then on to the NFL. But you know, this is probably the, the, the top state for in, in, in regards to numbers of quality Division I players. Young, the quick throw, complete you know, to Jones. You know, Florida gets a lot of them, uh, produces a lot of players. California produces a lot of, of the players. Ohio, Pennsylvania, and that area. But as far as pure numbers of top quality, uh, I don't think anybody does it more so than Texas. Well, the state's as big as most countries, so you got a lot of high schools. And they play a lot of football, and it's Friday night lights down here, boy. It's uh, it's, it's big on Friday nights, and it's big on Saturday afternoons yeah. in the state. I remember Mac Brown, when he left eight years ago, when he left North Carolina, he talked about that exact thing about recruiting in North Carolina in that area and then recruiting in the state of Texas. Thomas is going to have a first down, I think. Randy Fowler made the tackle pick up a six. I remember Max saying, <laughs> I remember Max saying that at North Carolina, he was the second, he was second, the second sport, the second, right? Because of basketball. It's the basketball. But, but, but going to Texas, not only was he the number one sport at the school, but everybody wanted to come all the recruits liked Texas and wanted to come whereas in North Carolina you're competing against all these other schools Duke and uh, NC State and uh, all the other schools in the ACC and you couldn't win the conference down there. right young play action zips it Pittman almost got it well got a hand on it and couldn't quite get the second hand on it a blitz coming from Kansas Taylor might run right by it Gets caught up in the traffic at about the 36 yard line. Charles Keith made the stop. You know, one of the things I'll always remember about Mac, and I've known him for a long time, when he left North Carolina, he said, you know, in the ACC and North Carolina, it's tough to win the con a conference title because of FSU at North Carolina. He says at Texas, you have a chance to win a national title. Didn't mention conference. He says at Texas because of the recruiting and the players in the state. If you can get out of the conference, you've got a chance to win a national championship. Of course, they're just a couple games away from having that chance if they keep playing like this. Here's Salvin Young. Swivels his hips. And he's got a first down inside the 30. They've got nice depth at that tailback position. Ramos Taylor started. We've seen Jamal Charles really have big plays about every time he's touched it. And Selvin Young 
who's kind of the veteran of the three anyway, a junior out of Houston. All three of those guys have some shake and bake in them, and they uh, they can all take it the, the, the whole way. And there's the cake after you shake and bake. That's 271 pounds of tailback Henry Melton. He's a, a true freshman also, waiting to get some time. Charles, what nice kind of, spin move what outside. What kind of cake was that? <laughs> the truck said pound cake. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we'll have a second down coming up. He's been in only a few snaps today. Selvin, as we said, almost always in there on third down. Melton's got seven touchdowns rushing as he's kind of a battering ram down close. He came in when they had first and goal at the three-yard line. They faked it to him. And that's where Vince Young found his backup tight end for the touchdown. And so. the reason they like Selvin on third downs is because he knows the offense better and on versus blitzes, he knows who to block and who to pick up, and he knows the checkoffs. 13th play of this drive. Charles takes it wide, got the corner, got the first. Knocked out of bounds by Mike Rivera, the inside linebacker, but not before he got it down near the 15-yard line. And Charles is still learning, obviously, how to how to run and how to make things work. Uh, he'll get over to the sidelines as you watch on the replay here. And his coaches will talk to him and they'll tell him, "Look, at this point in the ball game, yes, you want to run the ball, get as much as you can, but keep it in bounds, keep the clock moving, because we got we got a pretty good lead here." Yep. But I love the way the coaches describe him. They said he is a human highlight film. Well, he is. 300 meter hurdle champion for the whole nation last year. So not only can he run fast, he can run fast a long ways. Vince snaps it out there, complete to Ahmad Hall, a senior. And celebrating Veterans Day, no doubt, as he is a veteran. He's over in Afghanistan. There's our guys, the pilots from before the ball game. Gump Harrelson and Tad Niemer and Frank Wilson and Conga Jeru, the guys that had the uh, Marine Fighter 122 attack squadron from Buford, South Carolina. I was, seeing them, I was thinking about maybe those guys give me a ride home tonight. Yeah, we Let's may go need that them. Way. Yeah, we may need them. Yeah. That was the 10th different receiver. Texas has hit the season. Making everybody happy. On the ground, Ramon's Taylor to the secondary into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Twelve yards. Ramon Taylor, second touchdown of the day. Got a nice block from Casey Stuttered en route to the end zone. And it's 58 to 7. 15 plays and 80 yards in over eight minutes. They passed only when they had to, for the most part, there. Vino's point after up and good. 59 to 7. The third 80 yard or more touchdown drive of the day. And number 11 caps it as he gets in the end zone one more time. And they're getting closer. It'll be 10 0 here in about uh, an hour. Richmond McGee is going to kick off. I think Greg Johnson's leg sore from kicking off. To the one yard line to Kenneth Thompson. Thompson will be run out before he can get to the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Swanee. Hey guys, you know, yesterday we were talking to some of the players, and Ramon Taylor was among that group, and I asked him, what's the most important thing that's happened to you at Texas aside from football? And he said, well, it wasn't so much something that was good. He goes, my grandmother passed away uh, 2001, but on Christmas Day, before she passed away, here's a picture of a note she gave him that he says every day he reads this note. Now, I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm going to take, I'm going to read this note. And he says he reads it every day because he draws great inspiration. It says, to Ramont, I can't ask for a better grandson. Uh, you know, a better grandson than you. Uh, you are the center of my life. Be good, take care, and remember, never say I can't. I will love you the rest of my life. Grandma Celestine. And he said, when he is thinking about things and every day he reads that note before he leaves the house, he draws inspiration from those notes 
his grandmother wrote to him on Christmas Day in 2000, and she passed away uh, on 2001, that January. It means the world to him, and he's taken this to heart every day of his life. Yeah, that was pretty interesting when he was, he spent so much time giggling and goofing around until Swanee asked him that question about what's been the biggest thing. And boy, uh, the, you could hear a pin drop in the whole yeah. room when he was telling that story. Yeah, it was to in us. interesting, all, all the responses by all those guys. So, upcoming a third down. I'm sure Grandma's got a pretty good seat today. Probably better than we all have. Yeah, and it says a lot also about the kind of program that Matt Brown runs and, and Sally's involvement with the team. The guys really talk about it being a family and sticking together. Yep. Third down and 11 for Kansas. Blitz might come from the corner. Here they come. Swanson's in trouble, and he's going to dump it, and it'll probably be intentional grounding, or was he outside the box? I don't think so. Unless there was a guy in the general yeah, vicinity. Yeah, Cornish, I think. Cornish, was I there. guess, was close. Roderick Wright. Big Rod making the push in there. Senior out of Houston. All-American candidate on most, most of the lists, uh, Lombardi's and Outland's and all those award possibilities. Kansas. 0 for 10 on their third down. So another punt coming from Kyle Tucker. And again, I've said it many times, right from about his own goal line. That's the spot he's been kicking from a lot today. Juan Cosby is back. And he'll take it at the 30. And he got about 12 on the return. So good field position for Texas with a big lead. Probably not a lot of doubt about our IBM star watch today because Vince Young after two three and outs early in the ball game got the Texas offense in gear and once he got it in gear he never turned around and looked back did he 281 yards career high four touchdowns certainly has solidified himself as a guy that's going to be one of the five going to New York for the Heisman Trophy award ceremony I would imagine and now we see Matt Nordgren come in to take over Matt senior out of Dallas doesn't get a lot of Playing time because of number 10. Hands it off, and Charles will go down. Actually, a loss of about a yard. Joe Mortensen made the tackle. Senior playing on senior day, right? Yep, and like we said, he was one of the captains. And, uh, you know, 31 seniors, and Mac Brown told us it's really hard to have captains. We weren't quite sure how to do it because you're going to make somebody's mom or dad upset that uh, maybe they're kid wasn't a captain what they did do because of Veterans Day they had a gentleman around here who was a lawyer in town he was a, a war veteran a highly decorated war veteran who's been in every practice I think since uh, coach Royal was here and so he was one of the captains Ahmad Hall who is a veteran a Marine who had been in Afghanistan was another one of the captains and then Matt Nordgren was a captain because he's been a team player and not gotten a lot of playing time and has hung in there and worked hard every day just like everybody else and he not only was named a captain for today but he carried out the American flag out of the tunnel at the beginning of the ball game so uh, there's a mod number 46 big fullback and a good player 235 pounder Nordgren uh, Matt also holds for uh, field goals and the extra points so he does get involved uh, with the team in that regard here he is to throw and it tipped at the line and it's intercepted and it's Kevin Kane the linebacker and they finally drag him down Charlton Keith is the guy that got a hand on its first turnover of the day for the Longhorns Ball was tipped and then picked off by the middle linebacker. Well, the offense does change when when Vince goes out and another quarterback comes in. They have a package that Nordgren runs. He doesn't run nearly the option style plays. Here's the here's the uh, linebacker. Watch the uh, watch as he's going to drop back and the ball is going to get tipped. Keith's the guy that got a hand on it. Kane, the interceptor. First down at the 28 yard line. And breaking tackles. Clark Green down the sideline. Marco Griffin ran him out of bounds. Pickup of 12 for Green. As Cornish has the one Kansas touchdown today. That's the first play that Kansas had initiated started a play in Texas territory. The other touchdown run was uh, past midfield. So 
There's Clark Green's numbers. Good solid back. Both these guys are. They come in with very similar numbers. Green, Green and uh, Cornish. Green's, uh, Clark Green's got a career 120 pass receptions. He, he's very good catching the ball out of the backfield, obviously. Again inside, breaking tackles and heading to the end zone. Brandon McAnderson. 15-yard touchdown run. So they immediately turn the interception into another Jayhawk score. And this is what, what this is doing is what Mangino talked to Swanee about coming out, doing some good things. Don't lose your pride. Come back out the second half. You're not going to win this ball game, but it may help them win next week's ball game and get into a bowl game. Exactly. Scott Webb in for the point after. And the kick's up and good. So Kansas with a couple of scores in this second half, including this rumble by the fullback, capping a 28-yard drive following the interception. Put it on Kansas, 59 to 14, but Kansas has two touchdowns here in the third quarter. Lamont Taylor from about the one, spins off, and goes across the 20 to the 22. One of the first things that Mac Brown did when he first arrived in Austin is he went and met with Daryl Royal and uh, said, hey, I want you a part of anything that uh, if I come here, I want your approval. I want uh, I want you behind me and behind this program, and I want you involved in this program. And he's still around a lot. And uh, President Nixon giving him the trophy championship plaque. Their last uh, championships, they won the championship, what, 63, 69, and 70. 70. Yep. Here's the give to the big fella. And Henry Melton's got a first down. I still think that win back at the Rose Bowl last year uh, really set this team. I mean, they're, you know, the. They had, they had gotten beat. They had never been in the BCS Bowl. They had lost to Oklahoma last year. They got in the BCS Bowl. They got to the Rose Bowl. Here's Michigan. They come from behind. They beat Michigan in an outstanding, a great game. Vince Young lights it up. And then the following year, the second game this year, they go to Ohio State. At Ohio State, they beat them on a Saturday night of national television. It kind of validates yep. that whole Michigan win by beating another Big Ten team. The, the two best Big Ten teams over the years, they beat in a matter of three or four games. And then the, the giant monkey, they got off their back in uh, the Cotton Bowl in Dallas and the Red River rivalry, finally beating Oklahoma, which so many years of 10 wins, 11 wins, but it was that Oklahoma thing that was stuck right there that never gave them a shot. And after taking care of Oklahoma this year, uh, now they're rolling along, and they are as a confident a group as I think we've ever been around. Yeah, exactly. They, they're 16 wins in a row. This will be their 17th, and uh, only only short of uh, of what USC is doing. And I kind of see in this group that what I saw in USC. Yep. They're 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 very confident. They're they're positive. They're going to win. Uh, you didn't see that in Texas last year during the season, but after that Rose Bowl game and. And early in the season, when they beat Ohio State and then uh, Oklahoma, they think they can they can beat anybody and do anything. If they had a $10 bill with Vince Young's picture on it, it would be in Vince we trust. You can just tell the whole team just goes, hey, we got him. When we have VY, we always have a chance. That's what they say. Here's a first down run by Selvin Young. But uh, they've talked since the beginning of camp that this is where they want to get first. And if they get there and win that one, they know they can head to Pasadena. But Reliant Stadium, side of the Big 12 championship, as we'll be there to see either Colorado or uh, Iowa State, we assume, to play this Texas Longhorn team. And uh, already they have beaten Colorado this year rather handily. They put 40 on them as well. Colorado getting a little bit better every week, too, though. But they got a big ball game tonight. They got their hands full tonight. They're at, at Iowa State. Yep. 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Melton gets a handoff. Got a big hole. Makes a big hole on his own. He is all the way down to the 26-yard line. That's 270 pounds moving pretty quickly. 
He's a dancing bear, as you would say. You know, you're right, and he's another running back, another freshman running back, but we were talking to Mac about that. Look at this guy, look how big he is. 270 pounds. But we were talking about, I said, Mac, how do you get all these freshmen? How do you get the, all these freshmen next year's class? How do you get these guys to come? He says, we just tell them we're gonna play them. That's right. If you're good enough, you're gonna play. And they have two or three freshman running backs that play, and they have two or three freshman wide receivers that are playing on their run, right, and they play, and they're good. Big Henry went 22 yards for a first down. Now he just bulldozes his way. Man, you hear the pods, uh, the uh, pads popping down there. As he got down to the 21, picked up five more, four or five. Texas will work at the 21-yard line to open up the fourth and, and final quarter. Eighth play of this drive with Matt Nordgren in now. Four Vince Young at quarterback. He's in the shotgun. And he'll hand it off to Selvin Young. Left side, Selvin got a block. Got the first, might have it all. Touchdown! He just outran the defenders that had an angle on him. 21 yards for Selvin Young for the touchdown. Everybody getting in the act. Well, over 60 last week against Baylor. And now with the extra point pending, 65 here. 78 yard drive. Hey, little brother. Hey, hey boy, don't be going up the hill. You can't go up the hill. On the first play of the fourth quarter, another touchdown. And Kyle Phillips in to kick. You know it's a good day when your backup place kicker is knocking in extra points. Selvin Young. Saw that opening, burst through it, found the end zone. Texas outscores its opponents in every quarter. They do so again today. The 66 points, if you start wondering, say, you know, how long has it been since they've scored 66 points? 1977, they hung a 68 zip on Virginia. Here's the kick, Kenneth Thompson will take it. He's been a busy kick returner today. And he very seldom gets out much more than the 20 yard line. Well, they might get another look at Colorado in uh, a few weeks. And then maybe even bigger and brighter futures will lie in Pasadena. Swanson's pass out to Gordon. Gordon weaving through traffic, and he looks like he's got a first down. He does. To go back to the uh, Big 12 championships, Texas over Nebraska down there on the bottom in 96. But since that time and since the inception of the BCS, they have not won the Big 12 championship, and uh, they want to get there. That could be the rematch right there. Rematch of four years ago. Well, he's been in that championship game two of the last three years, and if they win this year, they'll be at uh, three of four, so. They know how to take care of the North pretty well. Yeah, they do. Here's a good looking run by Clark Green again. Down the sideline. He almost got away. John Cornish on the carry. Swanson had it knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Batted down by that Texas front. Talked about so much about whether or not uh, the Rose Bowl would have this team against USC, and if you project, Mr. Greasy, this is what you're looking at. Uh, this is what this is what I'm looking at. Uh, the Miami, the Orange Bowl. First of all, the Fiesta Bowl would get to replace uh, Texas, and they'd pick Notre Dame right there, right. and then Miami gets the first pick, and they'd pick Penn State. That's the. Uh, Miami is the ACC champion, uh, I project, so they play those two. Swanson throwing long. This man got a little bit turned around and might have had a play. I mean, it was Gordon, the intended receiver. Go back one more time and kind of finish our BCS Bowl thoughts. The Fiesta replaces uh, Texas with Notre Dame. Then the Orange Bowl gets to get the first pick because they pay more money than the other two bowls. And that's uh -huh. the way it goes. And they know they're going to get Miami, so they take Penn State. 
and then they get Miami because they're an ACC and uh, Georgia wins the SEC and West Virginia uh, is the last pick out of the Big East by the Sugar Bowl and they go to um, to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. So the, uh, if you don't know, and I'm and sure you do, if you're a fan, the Sugar Bowl is in Atlanta, not in New Orleans this year. And, and Bob, you're picking Georgia. You think Georgia or yeah, win all over Alabama? I'm picking Georgia, yeah. Ness forced me to do that. <laughs> I did not get involved. 66 to 14. Big day for the offensive linemen. They did their job beautifully. And now we're down to the final six and a half minutes. Matt McCoy and a quarterback into the clear. Number 13. Out to the 46 yard line, 26 yard run by a guy that doesn't get a lot of time either. Yeah, that fooled him. Nordgren doesn't do this very often. Oh, this is McCoy. Matt McCoy. Oh, it's McCoy. And he takes off and shows great wheels, got dragged down. No, that's not McCoy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yep. All right. And he comes back out after getting the play from the bench. Big first down run. Here's a give inside. And that one's going nowhere. Swanee. Well, well, guys, I got a little challenge for you here. Uh, we've been around this Texas football team a little bit, and I want you to see if you can match up these nicknames to the players they belong to. <laughs> you know, Chips, Bambino, GTG, Big Bang. Think right. about that for a moment. Okay. You know? it, you're talking about challenge. You think doing a 66 to 14 game is not a big enough challenge for me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All of us. <laughs> so this is how these little things get on the air. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Taxi second down. Go. Gives the little guy Hobbs, and he's got another first down. Pick up of 12 more. And so here, here are the answers for you. I don't have a lot of guesses. No guesses, but Roderick Wright is chips, huh? He's chips. Now, chips and Big Bank kind of mean the same thing. Guys are telling me that chips mean, you know, he's got lots of chips like poker chips. When uh -huh. He needs something from the equipment guy. You know, he's the guy who always is able to get it. Now, Bambino is because Rashard's coach couldn't say his last name, <laughs> so he just called him Bambino. I'll tell you about GPG in a moment. Well, most coaches can't say half the players' names anyway. GTG is uh, Mod Hall. GTG is a Mod Hall. This is the one that really stuck me because GTG means. The go-to guy. Uh -huh. And when you're a sergeant in the Marines and you've served in Afghanistan and you come back home and you got a name like the go-to guy, go to go to my team anytime. You got that right. Chips, Bambino, GTG, and Big Bank. And there's Big Bank, and Justin Blaylock. And there's always and there's always VY. And yeah, we know what kind of game VY had today. Hobbs again. And no gain on the play. Rodney Allen made the tackle. Don't forget, uh, time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. John Craig and Aaron will have all the scores and highlights from across the country. Tell you about any surprises along the way. Vince Young, four touchdown passes and didn't have to work much of the second half. Texas A&M, the next game in their path to a perfect regular season before the Big 12 championship game. Marcus Myers getting into the act. Bill Little said that, uh, you know, this is the best team that he's seen uh, in Texas in all the years he's been here. There's a lot of these guys coming back. I think 16 of the 22 well, starters. Offense, five yards. Fourth down. They took the delay game on purpose. The whole punting team is over on the sideline. The 16 of the 22 starters on this on this Texas team is back, including Vince Young. Eight on offense and eight on the defensive side. There's a guy that won't be. 
Jonathan Scott, big left tackle. Kind of reminds me of USC when we did their yep. game last year, the championship game. They had a lot of guys coming back. Those lot of guys are still undefeated at number one. Yeah, Texas number two. The key is always the quarterback. If you got your guy coming back, you don't have to break a new one in. Kick goes out of bounds with a little over two minutes remaining in the ball game. Nissan drive summary Texas nine scoring drives today five of those three plays or less but they also had what three that went over 80 yards yeah, and they the, did it in a variety of ways and the defense played well and especially the special teams were there also pass complete guys are still knocking heads out there pick up of eight Marcus Griffin made the tackle Marcus Griffin and Michael Griffin are twins yeah, that's Marcus 26 Michael's a starter he's 27 and Cedric Griffin number eight is not related so there's a lot of Griffins back there a lot of Young's also mm -hmm. Selvin Vince a couple of the Young's <laughs> throw complete out in the flat down the sideline out of bounds Jeff Foster with the reception <laughs> Well, everybody's thinking about roses. vivo has got one right there on a strap on his nose. <laughs> they think of everything, don't they? I wonder what he's thinking. Of. He's thinking about <laughs> grazing somewhere other than in the end zone. Well, he was thinking that all those tailgaters now coming to the game. He doesn't want to join them. <laughs> yeah, you don't want steaks yeah. cooked out there. <laughs> You know, you say, I really had a great steak last night to Bevo, and he looks at you a little cross eyed. Mm. <laughs> Swanson still throwing, broken up. Intended for Dexter Fields. Well, we've got a second. We'll give you our Chevrolet players of the game today. I don't think there was a lot of doubt on the Texas side of things. Vince Young, career high, four touchdown passes, and leading his team to its 10th straight win of the regular season. John Cornish. For Kansas, nice job in the backfield for him today. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Everybody can smile on the sideline, and one like this 66 points the most since 1977. Uh, penalty marker on the play. And that's kind of how things started going for Kansas early. I'll start 65 offense, five yards, second down. They had a few of those early in the ball game when they had some decent field position. Took them out of their game, and then Texas did the rest of the taking. Yeah, they just need to regroup. And I think Mark Mangino, I think the way they came out and started the second half was great. And he'll take this group back and he'll say, listen, Texas is a, is a class team. They're way above us. They're probably going to be playing for the national championship. Let's get it back together and let's beat Iowa State this coming week and get in a bowl ball, a good bowl game. Marcus Herford, another reception. Keeps this Kansas drive going in the final minute, 20 seconds. Remember, I remember Mark being so much fun uh, when he was with Oklahoma, the offensive coordinator of his championship uh, year, the championship. Uh, he was he was fun to be with and uh, glad to get an opportunity to be a head coach and he's done well he just uh, needs to get a few more players I thought the uh, their defense coming into this ball game was was quality they just ran into a powerhouse in this offense on the road no doubt throw down the middle completes Foster again down to the 20 and just not quitting down to the final seconds 26 yard pass play and the clock stopped as they moved the chains. Down to the, just outside the 20. Well, Mack will win his 80th game here. And for the first time since 1983, a perfect 10-0 start. They keep playing like this. There'll be more than 10. 11 or 12 or 13. Throw in a corner. Close. Incomplete. Herford was the intended receiver. So Texas, after getting a scare from Kansas a year ago on the road, 
no problem here today at home. And Mac Brown now in his stay at Texas will be 43 and 3 on this field. This is the winningest group of seniors in Texas football history. 31 of them out here for the final time in the final half minute right now. There's a slip screen out to Herford. Herford right now as he gets inside the 15 yard line. Set to uh, David Thomas, a senior tight end. who had an exceptional day today. I said to him yesterday, what kind of emotions are you going to have on the field for your last game at uh, Texas Memorial Stadium? He said, I'm trying not to think about it. I just got to think about the game because I don't want it to get in the way of the ball game. And Mac Brown said, you guys, if you want to cry, cry after the game. Don't cry before the game because if you lose the game, you're going to be crying twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. That's at the point I said to David and the rest of the guys who were standing around us. They said, you know what? I got a feeling that if you guys go on and win the rest of your games, they'll probably have a little party on this field for you early in January. That's and true. And that brought a smile to their face. Oh, yeah. Of course, David was very excited. We asked him uh, also about uh, his best moment off the field here in Texas. He said the fact that he just he got engaged. Yeah, he got engaged in Cassidy, May. I think, is his name. Cassidy? Yeah. Yep. So he's getting married so, in June. Yeah. He got a lot of oohs and ahs from his teammates when he said that. Kinesiology major. He's one of the, the you say who's the smartest guy on the team. They all point to him and he goes, you know, my dad was a math wizard. He thinks this stuff comes easy for me, but the calculus is a little tough. He said his dad knew his, his uh, test scores before he. Yeah, did. that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, they'll have a big time in the old town of Austin tonight. And this is a fun town to have fun in. I'll tell you that much. Third down and four, and now they whistle the play dead. Timeout. Texas. Texas First takes the timeout. Timeout. A 30 second timeout. And it's 66 to 14. <laughs> and both sides just take the timeout. <laughs> yeah, there's a little gamesmanship going on right now. And Texas might bring a blitz into the gamesmanship. <laughs> yeah. Swanson to the end zone, incomplete. That stops the clock with 14 seconds left. You know, I, only because I've been there, I know what, what, what the feeling is down there on the field because the coaching staff and the players, they don't want, they want to score if you're in the blue and they don't want you to score if you're in the burnt right, orange. And, right. and uh, I, I don't care what the score is. The first string defensive players who are not out there don't want the backups to allow them to score. There's a whole bunch of pride going on in both directions. Exactly, and that's the way it should be. Play it to the end. This might be the end for Kansas. Fourth down. Watson lofts it. Ticks. Broke up. Texas will take over. Eric Jackson got a hand on it. And that'll be the last gasp for the Jayhawks. So Texas is going to be 10 and 0 in a couple seconds. One play. Job well done. And uh, their head coach will let them know that. There'll be a brighter day for the Jayhawks, and it might come as early as next week. That's what they have to look forward to. Texas has their one of their arch rivals as if they don't have two or three but Texas A&M Thanksgiving weekend and then Reliant Stadium in Houston awaits against maybe Colorado if they can beat Iowa State tonight resounding victory for the Longhorns they win it 66 to 14 they're thinking roses they got a couple of hurdles left but they jumped over one today they jumped over it pretty high and they never looked back Career high for Vince Young, four touchdown passes, and Texas wins it going away. 66 to 14, the final score. Texas is 10-0 and undefeated in the conference.